From the television studio to the television receiver in your living room in a fraction of a second, this is the miracle of television. Let's visit a television station and see what goes on behind the scenes. This is a television studio. Unlike radio studios, it is quite large in order to provide the necessary room for all the scenery and equipment that is needed in television production. The studio has an intricate lighting system allowing any desirable combination of lights to be set up. As in motion picture work, many moods and effects can be created by the technique of lighting. During a studio show, two cameras are usually used and on bigger productions as many as four are often needed. All of the camera operators and floor directors wear headsets over which they receive instructions from the person who is directing the show. Whether there are two, three, or four cameras used on a program, only one of them is on the air at any one moment. The director is the man who decides which of the cameras to put on the air. He tells the engineer in the control room, and the engineer switches that camera on the air. On each camera is a set of red tally lights. These lights go on when that particular camera is on the air, to indicate to the performers which camera to face. This is where the television system starts, the TV camera. The camera has a turret with four lenses and the camera operator can select the desired one from the rear. And this is the heart of the camera, the image orthicon tube. The camera lens focuses an image onto the image plate of the image orthicon tube inside the camera. The image orthicon, along with the other tubes and circuits in the camera, converts this visual image into an electrical impulse. This image is broken down into individual elements by scanning one line at a time. There are 525 horizontal lines in one complete picture, and the camera produces 30 complete pictures per second to give the illusion of motion. Using a test pattern, the camera operator makes linearity adjustments and sets up the camera so that it produces a picture free of distortion. When the camera is properly set up, it is capable of producing pictures of high quality. The image orthicon is mounted on a carriage inside the camera, and focusing is accomplished by moving the tube back and forth in relation to the camera lens. The camera's viewfinder consists of a small picture tube on the screen of which is displayed the actual picture that the camera is taking. The video signal produced by the camera is delivered to the control room by this cable. Now we're in the projection room where all of the motion picture films are run. This is the film camera. The image from the projector is projected directly into the camera and onto the image plate of the camera tube, which in this case is a Viticon tube rather than an image orthicon. The Viticon is much smaller than the orthicon, and its characteristics are ideally suited for use in film cameras and also for small portable cameras. This film chain consists of a 16 millimeter projector for running motion picture film and a slide projector for projecting 35 millimeter slides used for station breaks and advertising purposes. Both projectors operate into the same camera by means of a mirror system. The projectors are operated by remote control from the control room. Start. Stop and slide change. Here is one of the latest miracles of television, the video tape recorder. With this recorder, it is possible to record a complete program, video and audio, and play it back immediately as quickly as the tape can be rewound. And the quality is practically as good as a live studio show. When a recording is no longer needed, the tape can be erased and used over again and again. 
The recorder is a complex piece of equipment and all of the control circuits and amplifiers necessary for its operation are contained in these two racks. This machine records both pictures and sound simultaneously on a magnetic tape that is two inches wide. Due to the high range of frequencies involved in a video signal, a great deal of information must be recorded on every inch of this tape. Therefore, a special high quality tape must be manufactured for video recording. The recording head assembly actually consists of four heads located at 90 degree positions around a disc. A powerful synchronous motor turns this assembly at a speed of about 14,400 revolutions per minute as the tape is pulled past it. Signals are fed to and from the heads by slip rings and brushes. A vacuum action holds the tape in intimate contact with the revolving heads as the tape is transported at a speed of 15 inches per second. As a result, the video or picture is recorded in diagonal segments across the width of the tape. The audio or sound and control signals are recorded a moment later by more conventional type heads. The machine will hold a reel of tape large enough to play for an hour and a half. Now we come to the control room the nerve center of the television studio. Located in these racks are the audio circuits, pre-amplifiers, line amplifiers, patch panels, and so on. The video circuits involve video amplifiers, distribution amplifiers, stabilizing amplifiers, synchronizing generators, power supplies, and many other necessary circuits. Located along this control desk are all of the camera control units. These control units supply the necessary power, operating voltages, and synchronizing signals to all of the cameras in the studios. The video engineer operates these units, and by remote control from this position, he is able to make adjustments of beam current, target voltage, beam focusing, setup, gain, and others on the cameras in the studios. It is his job to work with the cameraman and keep all of the cameras operating properly and producing good, sharp pictures. On the screen, he is able to see exactly what the camera is producing, and he can also observe an oscilloscope display of the video signal. At this point, we notice that the video signal does not contain any synchronizing pulses. The sync pulses are added later at the switcher. This is the video switcher. The video signals from all of the studio cameras, the film cameras, the video tape recorder, and the network finally come to this one unit known as the video switcher. From this point, any one of these signals is available for transmission at the punch of a button. The engineer who operates the video switcher is directly responsible for pushing the right button at the right time to put the right picture on the air. The monitor directly in front of him, in the center, shows the final outgoing picture that is being sent to the transmitter. 